Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Homekeepers. How nice to be with you today. Thank you for stopping by. Stay with us. You, you won't regret it. And I do want you to feel like you're right here with us and that we're good friends and we can have a good cup of tea together. A few days ago, I sat down with two very charming gentlemen, uh, David Welday III. He's president of NextGen Institute and also uh, Dr. Jim Cofield, who is a psychologist and professor of counseling at the Reformed Theological Seminary in Orlando. And these gentlemen together wrote the book, Shaping Your Family Story. Uh, from time to time on the interview, you will see their website. I certainly recommend this. I, I think it's good for parents to always be learning and growing and, and you don't always just parent the way you were parented. Probably none of us were parented perfectly, but there's a lot of good information out there about how you can work to have a really out good outcome with your children, and I'm, I'm not sure there's anything more important than perhaps your own soul. You can find a lot of that material in this book that they've written, so I'm anxious for you to hear what they have to say. Also, I'm going to join Stephanie for something I just love, but I've never had a, a kind of a vegetarian one, and that's a quesadilla. This is a black bean quesadilla, and it's got some salsa in it, and I love black beans and all. Very, very anxious to taste this one. And this would be a good one every once in a while to have for dinner at night, and you won't have a meat dish. And also, uh, I don't have to tell you how expensive meat is today. So, um, Watch Stephanie make it. I think I'm just going to stand and smile while she does that and see if it might be something you would like to have. And before I join her, I have a few more books left, If I Can Do This Diet, by Dr. Don Colbert, a wonderful Christian doctor. Uh, I know him personally, and it's very hard to explain this book, except that in it, you'll probably find your own personal situation uh, that will help you to uh, really maintain the weight that you should according to your body frame and all that. So um, if you use your credit card, that number at the bottom is for you, 1-800-229-0059. And the address, if you write to us, and the, co the cost is only $20. That includes your shipping and handling. If you go to the store and look at this book, uh, I think on the back of it, the retail price is even more than that. So uh, while we have them, I would suggest you take advantage of it. So hope you'll do that. And I've joined Stephanie over here. Hello there. Hello there. Uh, this one looks really interesting to me. I love quesadillas. Mm -hmm. It's something I make at home because it's so cheap and it's so Have you ever made simple. a vegetarian one no, like this? No, because my husband wants meat. Yeah. So I He's a hunter. Do, yeah, I usually do chicken. I'll do, I'll get a rotisserie mm -hmm. chicken or I'll have baked, you know, chicken breasts over the weekend and mm -hmm. chop them up and I'll do chicken and cheese. Have you ever done beans in them? I've done refried beans. Uh-huh. Yeah. So all you're going to do is you're going to take one can of beans and you're going to mash them up. And then you have another can and then we're gonna, not mash. Right. We're going to mix another can and a cup of salsa. That's what's going to give it the kick. Yes. Which I love all of these ingredients. I love Mexican food, so. I... Do if it's not too hot. I know you're Usually not a spicy. Too... I like oh, spicy. This... You'd hate the hot and sour soup that I have at yeah. lunch sometimes because I sweat sometimes. The men <laughs> in my family can really take it, <laughs> take it heated. Okay, so we have another can of beans that oh, we're so not going to. Then you just mix them and together. And you mix it up. Uh -huh. and do they do that so it'll stick together better? Do you think? Yeah, makes a better consistency. Mm -hmm. And that's um, any kind of salsa you like, of course, yeah. if this one's mild. Yeah, you could also do refried beans in here, which would yeah. be, you could do one can of refried beans and a can of black beans. Now, when you buy salsa, do you get the pot? I get medium. Do you? Because my, my husband doesn't like it too, super spicy yeah. either. So I try to be nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you just take two um, flour tortilla shells. Good. Make sure your pan's getting getting nice and hot. What have you got in that pan? Oh, butter. butter. I don't do that at home. I, I don't have anything in it at home. I just put oh. the quesadillas in them and they brown. Oh, that that's good. Just yeah. like that. So spread Just the... mash up some black beans and throw some salsa in it. It's good. Yeah. And then you put lots of cheese on it because you want gooey, yummy. Do you know the first time cheese? I had quesadillas on this show, who made them? Who? John Hankey's wife. 
Nice. Diane. Very nice. Okay, so cheese. In fact, I don't think I had ever made one and it looked so easy and they're so they're filling. They're very satisfying. Oh yes. So put the other one on top. Throw it in the oven. And you're just gonna cook it like two. It's not minutes the on, oven, it's I mean the pan. oven. It's yeah. Frying pan. See, what I'm you have me thinking about um, your other quesadillas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you just fry it on both sides. And then you slice it up. If you, you if you ate sour. a whole one, you would have a meal. I probably eat a quarter of one. Me, Arthur and Ruby and I are just so different in that respect. <laughs> I could probably eat two of these and be satisfied. Could you she's really? Like they, I could eat a quarter. This size? Yes, that's why she's this way, uh -huh. and I'm this way. <laughs> so yep, let's get a little brown. Perfect. Isn't there. That perfect. Yum, it yeah, is and then you so I'm it. just melting the cheese on the other side now. And you can just make up a whole big, big batch of these. Mm -hmm. Whatever's left over, stick them in a bag, stick them in the freezer. The next time you just have to bring them out, warm them up. Yeah, okay, now what do we do with sour cream? We're gonna put it on, we're gonna put it on top. Okay. Yeah, okay. So I just need a minute here. Mm -hmm. I cranked that heat up so we could get yeah, it. The, yeah, we might have to pull it out a tad early like we always do. Yeah, oh. I love quesadillas. Uh-huh. Well, I'm telling you, this this is a great one if you're trying to cut some corners, you know? Yeah. Because um, no meat. Mm -hmm. Beans are so cheap. So And cheap. quite healthy. Yeah. Actually. They're very good for Can you. Can you do a, uh, one, split one more for me? Yeah. Yeah, let's do this yeah. here. There you go. So. Okay, a little sour cream. Mm-hmm. For you. All there right. You go. Let me just take this off of here for a second. I'm gonna cut this like this. Uh, like rather, a lady. Well, rather than <laughs> rather than wrestle with it. Yeah. Which is mm. so good, right? Mm -hmm. Ugh. Is it hot? Mm-mm. Mm -mm. Mm. That is those flavors are really good, friends. Mm-hmm. That is delicious. Mm -hmm. And if it were not delicious, you would know, even if she didn't say a word. No, it, she gets this look on her face. Can't help it. That's my face. Yeah. Well, that's, that's why I love you, because television, you've got to be honest. People mm -hmm. are looking right in your face. So this is called uh, Black Bean Quesadillas. And information's coming up on your screen. Got a couple ways to get it. Email and write to us. It's coming right up. And then... Um, I'm anxious for you to meet my guests, so stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Oh, it's my joy to welcome back to Home Keepers, uh, David Welday, who is in uh, publishing and market strategy and so forth, and Dr. Jim Cofield, uh, psychologist, and bet you could write a book. Well, we did. We <laughs> did write a book. Say that. I know it, <laughs> but I mean, uh, the things that will go to your grave with you of uh, people you've talked to, I would imagine is very heartbreaking at times and as you mentioned on the last program the wonderful thing about being a christian psychologist you can offer hope and redemption and jesus can fix things can't he well he can i think the the, uh, the idea of one of the beautiful things about the gospel the truth of the gospel is that the story doesn't end in ultimately in tragedy the story doesn't end at the cross even the, the mm -hmm. story um, and, and often our tragedies aren't the things that have to be the final word on us and God will uh, if is writing a, a, a story that ends in, in glory you know I've been a Christian as long as I can remember but that still gives me a thrill the the story of redemption and it it translates to a personal life to a family life and it sure does yeah okay um want to try to pick up when last time you were here, which was basically just an introduction to this wonderful book 
called Shaping Your Family Story. And from time to time, there will be a website come up. That's where you can get it. Or you can go to Amazon, uh, Barnes & Noble, probably all the places that people buy books nowadays. Okay. Don't most of us parent the way we were parented? I think initially you do. Mm -hmm. I think initially you, you, know, you do what you know. <laughs> and what we know is what we learned. And mm -hmm. so and one of the things we say in the book is that sometimes our values are more caught than taught. And there, there's a way in which that's true for parenting. And mm -hmm. so the way that you were parented is the, the way that, you'll, that you might have a tendency to go. And that's, that's why we wanted to give some guidelines that might help change that if you had a negative parenting experience that, that you grew up in that, mm. that because the story can change the story can change to, to glory and and we want our lives to echo into eternity mm -hmm. and so yeah but you know if, if a kid was raised you know being beaten all the time uh, unless something happens and mainly if he meets Jesus that's all he knows about parenting that is all that, that's that, scary that, that's what he knows but there is something in us I mean we are you know we, we are we're image bearers of God. At some level, the big question in the world, uh, and I, you were talking about going to counselors and psychologists, that at, at some level, the world now says that we're just a high form of animal. But right. the Bible would say that we're a low form of angel, that there's something divine, something sacred in our nature. We, mm -hmm. we say in the book at one point that uh, we're, we're everybody's so concerned about making their children feel special. And if, <laughs> and if, one per, if, if everybody's special, nobody's special. <laughs> But God is more concerned with taking ordinary and making it sacred. I mean, throughout the Bible, think about it. And throughout the Bible, you've got stories of ordinary being made sacred. Fishermen become apostles. Uh, shepherds yeah. become the people who actually see Jesus, Jesus uh, right at his birth. Uh, mere bread and wine becomes the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. And yeah. so our children don't need to know they're special as much as they need to know that there's something sacred in their design, that they... They are made to live a life that echoes into eternity. Yeah. They're made to live a life that, 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 that matters. And, and that's, that's what we all long for, and that's in us. And so that's even in the child who was raised in a, in a negative place. There's something uh, that, 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 that shadow of the, of the divine design that God put us, that we're created in his very image. That's in everybody. But think of the gift that you can give your son or daughter to, for them to grow up knowing that there is a story that's marked out for them, that they are not just a product of happenstance mm -hmm. uh, or circumstance, but there, is a, there was an order, there was a divine plan that, about their coming into being. So many parents feel ill-equipped to be a mom or a dad because maybe the circumstances of their becoming a parent right. wasn't ideal. Some parents are, have kids that were well thought out and well planned, but others, sometimes the, the, the child comes into the world in very difficult, even horrific circumstances. But the good news is, is that yeah. every child was created sovereignly by God and that before they were ever conceived, that story, Psalm 139 says, all the days ordained for you were written in his book before one of them came to be. And so every child was created with an intentional story. And so no matter how prepared you feel as a parent, God doesn't make mistakes. You're your son or your daughter's parent yeah. for a reason, and you can literally partner with him to God, help that child discover their divine story. God is an intentional mm -hmm. parent above all. Uh, I hate to sound like the Pharisee that says, you know, I thank God I'm not like you, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm so thankful. People say that about us all That the time. I'm not a millennial. <laughs> I had this article by a Christian telling us what, how we should treat millennials. And one of them says, value us. I mean, it was like, get over yourself. We have trophies given out for nothing. My uh, youngest grandsons, you know, they played and they'll get a trophy if, even if they lost all the games. And now ch Christian uh, parents who have, you know, an understanding of parenting, they're battling that kind of political correctness. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful that when I came home and tattled on a teacher that my mother said, well, what did you do? You know, that, that uh, raised with a sense of values that didn't tell a kid they're special when they're not. And, and they'll do that, you know, if a kid flunks everything and all, they 
find something special about them. How does a, how does a Christian parent just bring sanity, maybe? Well, it seems like kids are always asking two basic fundamental questions, and they're really theological questions. We're, we're that, that we're asking as adults, they just, we're, they're, they're asking it in child, they're asking the parents. That's why I think God's so excited about parenting, because you're ultimately asking the questions of the nature of God. Is God good, gracious, and loving? Is God just, righteous, and holy? And the answer to that is yes. yes. <laughs> and, A big yes. And, and, and we tend to fall off one side or the other, usually in our theologies. But, but we also, in, in terms of parenting, the two, those two questions, when you make them personal questions to children, are, do you love me? Um, and are there consequences to my behavior? Will there be a, are, is there structure? Is there justice? And so uh, those two questions there, the kids are saying, do you, do you value me? Do you love me? And that's, sometimes our society tries to just answer that question. With, with your, and, and sometimes there's some parents that just try to answer the question of, there's, oh, there's rules, good. there's that's rules. Yeah. But God is inviting us to, to answer the question the way he does, which is, yes, you're loved. You're, you matter to me. You're, you are uh, my son, my daughter. You have great value. Mm. You're sacred. But at the same time, oh, and there are consequences. There are consequences to behavior. There are structures. There are, there are things that you'll bump against that, that will, will create boundaries and walls. And so there's a way in which those same deep theological questions about people that people ask as adults, is God good? Is God loving? Is God just and holy? God wants you to, to set, the, set the table, if you will, for your children to have the, those questions answered correctly as they're adults by you as a parent answering those questions to them as children. But they'll ask it in non-theological terms. They'll say, do you love me? Will you set limits for me? Will you put consequences to my behavior? And the answer is yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of these stories were overblown, but I wonder how a parent thinks or feels in today's climate of political correctness, and you should never, ever, ever, ever be offended, uh, that college students were handed Play-Doh and stuffed animals because of their reaction to a presidential election. What kind of parents did they have? Or... Were they really influenced when they got in a whole different atmosphere? We don't like it, but the reality is part of the human conditions is we were made to struggle. The Bible says in this world you will have struggle, you will have tribulation, yeah. and that's woven into the fabric of who we are. And so many times as parents, if it were up to us, a friend of mine has said, if it were up to us, we'd kill our kids because we'd want to save them from all forms of struggle. But the reality is part of the way we are formed, God's character is worked within us, the way we become, yeah. we live into the full measure of the story that God has for our lives is through the things that we struggle. And so as parents, we need to not just help our kids avoid struggle, but teach them how to cope with and deal with disappointment mm -hmm. and struggle and things going wrong and, and the consequences of, of behaviors. And, and, and so often we want to yeah. shelter our kids from that when the truth is we, we hamstring them because we have not given them the gift of learning how to embrace and respond and adapt well to and struggle. And also by the way the parent goes through struggles. I, mm -hmm. I remember, I was a pastor's kid and, and there were struggles from time to time. And, and you, you might look at your dad and think, well, he's not being treated right, you know. And, and you watch them uh, go through that. That's, that's a great lesson in itself, isn't it? Oh, it sure is. I mean, you, you've got to remember we're, we're teaching kids to live in a fallen world. And mm -hmm. so uh, conflict is inevitable. Disappointment is inevitable. Um, and, and one of the most important things we can teach our kids is how do you deal with disappointment without being cynical? How do you deal yeah. with, how do you deal with, with loneliness without becoming desperate or needy? How do you engage those sort of things? Uh, because it is a fallen world and there's, 
of who, who was it that said there's something wrong with everything on this side of heaven? Well, <laughs> well, that's kind of a negative way to say it, but, but there's some truth to it. <laughs> sure. There is some truth to the fact that we were made for Eden. We were made for heaven. And, we're, and at some level, all of us are homesick for this that. This is not our home. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and that's, that's what we have going for us as parents. No matter where you're starting from, no matter, um, no, no, it, it's not too late. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's no matter where you are in your own journey of, of parenting, it, it's not too late to begin to think about, um, about how I might engage this, uh, this story um, in a fallen world toward glory, how I might mm -hmm. parent in such a way that uh, makes uh, a difference. The, the structure of the book uh, is really broken into five core parenting pillars, reflecting, directing, correcting, protecting, and connecting. And the interesting thing is that there are five core elements of every great story. It doesn't matter whether the story is a romantic comedy or an action adventure or mm -hmm. a thriller, but it's plot, character, setting, theme, and conflict. Mm -hmm. And if there's no conflict in the story, it frankly isn't all that Pretty great a story. <laughs> so so it was it was a fun for us as we began with this palette of these five parenting pillars of reflecting, directing, correcting, protecting, and connecting, and then saw the beautiful way that God uh, showed us how these five core elements of every great story lined up with those things, and that's really yeah, part of that, what came into the book. That's the reason I thought this should be in the church libraries, uh, be great Sunday school series, actually, um, because you have it... Uh, in a form that that really uh, would be easy to teach is, mm -hmm. is in your five principles. Um, you say, choose your rules carefully. Um, and when it comes to rules, should there be some flexibility or you go to jail without collecting $200? <laughs> well, well um, you said it very well earlier when you talked about your, your, mo your mother and those you said yeah. great things about your family and your parents. Treated all the kids the same. And, and, and sometimes you realize, well, all of us aren't the same. That's what we have to learn. Uh, the, uh, one of my children is autistic, and therefore to, to parent him is different than, parenting, than parenting the other two children, my other two children, though all three of them are amazing kids. Um, and so there, there is something uh, unique about each of our children. And, they're, they're, and so when we talk about choose your rules carefully. Sometimes, sometimes you, you, you can pick the, what's the old line? Uh, you, can, you, you might win the battle and lose the war. Or the, choose some, the hill you die on. You know, <laughs> yeah, and, and sometimes we'll, 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 we'll enforce a rule. Yeah. You know, sometimes I, I remember re enforcing a rule my father gave me. And it, it, was, it had nothing to do with anything other than it was just his history. You know, <laughs> he, a rule. And, and the rule, it's a silly rule, but, but it was that a Cofield, Cofield men, um, never wear a hat inside and, and always wear a shirt. And so we moved to Florida and my son's out cutting the grass and it's a million <laughs> degrees outside. And it's like, it's like cutting the grass on the, on the edge of the sun. We had a rule. <laughs> and, and he comes in the house to get some water and put a shirt on. And he goes, yeah. why, why, it, I'm going right back out in a few minutes. I'm just going to sit down for a minute and get yeah. some. So, oh. and, and it's like. Non-negotiable. Well, and, and is, is that a really a rule I want? Is that a hill I want to die on? And sometimes we'll, we'll, we'll get some fairly arbitrary rules. Uh, maybe some of our family's Ten Commandments that's been inherited yeah. that aren't God's Ten Commandments. Uh, and we'll enforce those rules and make those as if they're the significant thing. So one of the things when we talk about conflict and rules, which is one of the, one of the parts of the book, uh, because conflict is inevitable, mm -hmm. one of the things is to talk about mm -hmm. being... Um, you know, being careful about the rules you're going to enforce. In the book, we, we give several different discipline techniques and rule techniques because the truth of the matter is you just need more than one. One size doesn't fit all. If you're starting a project and building a table, uh, you need a hammer, but you need more than just a hammer. You might also need a saw and a wrench and a ruler and, and uh, other tools. And so parents need more than just one or two tools. And so that's why we were... Uh, very intentional in trying to expand a parent's uh, tools in the tool bag that they can f draw on in terms of sh raising their children yeah. well. You know, talking to you gentlemen, the, the time just, we're, we're almost out of time. But I want to uh, 
one more thing. We've got about one minute. And that is that a parent should be quick to say, forgive me. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think people think because they're parents, they're, that's not required of them that it would maybe show a weakness. I think humility is required in all leadership and parenting is probably the ultimate place where we lead. And so the, the ability for a parent to say, I made a mistake there. Uh, I, 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 as a psychologist, as a counselor, when, when people will often tell me their story and a moment like that is a story that is, is a moment that gets etched in a child's life when they, when they see a parent wow. say, I wish I'd done that differently. Or I mean, how many times I've heard a person sit in my office say, I wish my dad would just say he was sorry, or I wish, or I never heard my parents say they were sorry. I never heard them say they were wrong. And I think, and that's, yeah. and, and so when you do say that, it, it has such a richness when you are wrong. It shows mm -hmm. your kids that, you, that they can make mistakes. It also shows that you're reflective, that you're thinking about the way you parent. Mm -hmm. And we are out of time, but boy, I want you to come back. This is, this is rich stuff. Stay with me. I have a couple of things to say before we say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Okay, let me remind you again, as long as they last, uh, I will offer you the book, I Can Do This Diet by Dr. Don Colbert. And um, we've run out of it once and had to reorder and I'm not sure how much longer they'll be available. But uh, this is your opportunity. The number for your credit card is there at the bottom of the screen as well as the address if you want to write to us. I think that um, if you're serious about really getting your health in order and your weight in order that this is a book that you can learn a lot from. It's different than most, and I strongly, strongly advise it. I am so thankful that uh, we can bring to you people like these gentlemen who wrote the book, and the book's name is Shaping Your Family Story. Uh, you can get it on Amazon or Barnes & Noble, or you can get it on the website that we had up earlier today. I'm very thankful that the Lord puts it on people's hearts to write books like this. Because you know what? You read it, you probably be a better parent, and uh, your child will be better for it. That's important. We're out of time. But join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.